What is up, my fellow fly fishermen? Graham Ferguson here, host of Flycast in Colorado. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to tie the frumpy grumpy. <laughs> This is one of my favorite terrestrial patterns and attractor patterns in general. If you got that guys do any fishing on high alpine lakes, I'm telling you this fly is killer and it's always going to get the job done. Uh, it's super fun to fish and I'm telling you guys this fly really works. I haven't seen a fly that cutthroats love more than this one right here. So uh, another reason that I like it is it has so much variation in it. You can use all sorts of colors of foam, all sorts of uh, middle sections. You can do it with or without rubber legs or without the middle entirely. It's just a super awesome universal pattern, and it's great for pretty much anything you could imagine that entails dry fly fishing. So the ingredients to making up this fly are going to be some terrestrial dry fly hooks, some red thread, sparkle mylar. I like this rainbow sort of black color some parapost, which is what you're going to be making the wing case out of, peacock hurl, some brown or black uh, round rubber legs. These are optional, but they give the fly a very nice touch. Uh, I'm using white foam cylinders, but you can use sheet foam of any color and any kind, and some uh, grizzly hackle, and that's very important to keeping the fly floating. First, you are going to want to start your thread about two-thirds to halfway down the shank of the hook. Then you can trim off the excess uh, thread that you have. Then next what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to um, take some of your sparkly yarn stuff, I don't know what it's actually called, and take about a three to four inch strand and start looping it over. I like to do that about two times so you have four individual strands. Then what you want to do after you fold it over is trim the ends of it so it is all uh, frayed out on the sides and once you do that just kind of massage the ends of it and kind of rub it together so that basically will kind of make them all splay out and it will give you a very good look then once you're done you can after you kind of massage it in a little bit make sure it looks good then you can massage it in or uh sorry wrap it in and that's going to be your tail to the fly then you can trim off the excess and save that for a later fly. So once you are done putting in the tail, you are going to get your foam ready, your uh, whatever color works. Here I have white. And you're going to want to wrap that in at the base. So you want to make sure that when you're wrapping it up, you almost want to even out the whole uh, base of the fly. Just make sure that everything is pretty even. So just make a bunch of thread wraps to make sure it's even. Then take your peacock curl, snip off the curly bits, and then tie that in. I like two to three strands, I think, should do. So once you have your peacock curl tied in, then you can uh, take your peacock curl and start wrapping it down the uh, hook and go all the way up until where your thread stops, so roughly two-thirds of the way down the uh, body of the hook. And then you can tie off your peacock curl and trim off the excess and once you have secured that you can fold the foam over and then secure that on top of the peacock curl kind of creating that nice back and that'll help the fly stay floating for a lot longer then trim that off and make sure that you tie down all of the foam so there's nothing showing next take some para post make sure you don't get some of those bits where it's almost tied together and take maybe an inch or two of it and that the like that'll do and then just kind of pull out the shorter fibers and once you're done with that you can use that to uh, tie that down onto the thorax of your fly and that will basically kind of create almost a wing case in a way and it just gives it an, a lot more floatability if that's even a word and yeah just throw that in there and that should Hope the fly stay floating for longer and gives it that kind of crippled look almost, which I really like in this fly. Next, you are going to want to take your hackle, uh, take off the stem so you have a little bit of stem showing, and make sure the shiny side of the hackle is facing towards you. And once you are done with that, you can begin to wrap the hackle down the thorax of the fly until you reach the eye of the hook. Then secure that 
tackle, making sure that you don't take any more wraps than you really need to. I like to take some wraps in front of the uh, para post at the front to just kind of make it stick up a little bit. Then, when you're done, you can whip finish the fly once everything is secure and you've kind of trimmed it up. Then, two to three wraps with your whip finish, and if you want to, the fly can be done here, or you can take an extra step, which I definitely recommend, which is taking your thread and starting it in the uh, midsection of the fly. And once you have that wrapped in, clear off the excess and pull out some your brown rubber legs. And then uh, I like to split the rubber legs so you just have one. And then about three to four inches, or sorry, two to three inches, four inches would be excessive. So take that and trim it off so you have your uh, two to three inch piece. I think two inches works just fine for the size that I'm tying on. And take that and start wrapping it, or no, don't wrap it. Tie it down onto the thread that you have. Pull it back a little bit. Make sure that it's at the length that you like. And once you're done on one side, wrap the rubber legs around the, uh, the front of the fly and secure it onto the other side so it kind of makes that uh, ribbon shape. And when you are done uh, securing down and tying down your legs and making sure that mid section right there with the red thread really stands out, then do three to four whip finish turns. And uh, as you can see there, I did quite a few because these have a tendency to fall apart. So do as many as you see fit. Then you can snip the, fol uh, the folded over section of the legs and trim them down to your liking. Remember, the rubber legs are optional, but I think it makes this fly look really awesome and gives it a great terrestrial sort of buggy look. So that is the Frumpy Grumpy Fly. I hope you guys learned a lot from watching this video. And I hope you guys like this fly as much as I like this fly. Thank you.